you back. Thank you. Thank you. The gentleman from Pennsylvania, Mr. Thompson. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I appreciate you taking the time to be with us today. It's good, good to see you. Um, as an experienced, th experienced therapist, rehabilitation services manager, and a licensed nursing home administrator in rural areas, uh, I've witnessed firsthand the importance of strong doctor-patient relationships and, and tailored health care delivery, uh, particularly in rural areas such as those within the Pennsylvania 15th Congressional District. Expanded access to telehealth and telemedicine is vital to providing care when physical facilities could be miles away. Uh, prior to the COVID-19 pandemic, healthcare providers began to expand their capacity to deliver health services remotely to their patients. Uh, the original intent of these services was twofold, uh, to supplement in-person care for individuals in underserved or hard to reach areas, and to supplant in-person care for patients who prefer using technology uh, to access their healthcare services. However, the COVID-19 pandemic has laid bare the critical and immediate need for expanded access to telehealth and telemedicine services throughout the country. In the CARES Act and the subsequent COVID-19 packages, Medicare, Medicaid, and private health insurance plans were required to temporarily require or increase payments for telehealth ser services related to COVID-19 treatment or testing, diagnosis, or treatment. Now, these uh, packages also waived other telehealth restrictions and encouraged the use of telehealth to provide access to care. Now, while this was an important and necessary first step towards expanding these services, I believe we must continue to advance the progress we've made over the past two years. Now, for these reasons, I was proud to introduce H.R. 4437, the Helping Ensure Access to Local Telehealth Act, or Health Act, which builds off the provisions found in previously passed COVID-19 packages. Specifically, the bill codifies Medicare reimbursement for telehealth services rendered by community health centers and rural clinics. Uh, it removes the geographic restrictions related to originating sites where the telehealth distance site provider is a federally qualified health center or a rural health clinic. and allows these health facilities to continue to utilize audio-only telehealth visits for patients who don't have access to quality broadband. Uh, Mr. Secretary, I hope you agree that the ability to use telehealth services during this crisis has demonstrated how this technology can play a pivotal role in improving health equity by increasing access to care for the vulnerable populations. And uh, as we look beyond the pandemic, Mr. Secretary, does the administration support a continuation of these flexibilities on a permanent basis? Congressman, first, I, I applaud you for being interested and putting those, uh, those thoughts into paper and uh, legislation to help us on telehealth. Uh, we hope that we can work with you to ha make some of those authorities permanent. We agree with you that many of them are critical for communities to move forward. We hope that you will also look at the way we can be, make sure that everyone is accountable because moving towards telehealth could become a way that some try to abuse the system, take advantage of it, and we wanna make sure that they don't ruin it for all the folks that really do need telehealth services. So we're looking forward to working with you to expand access to telehealth services, but to make sure it's also done properly so that taxpayers and those patients aren't abused. Uh, and absolutely, that's something we should be doing throughout all of healthcare, having practiced healthcare for 28 years before coming to Congress. I mean, we've, we've seen that with other things, uh, some uh, uh, folks who try, try to take care, advantage of Medicare billing with, uh, uh, you know, with some durable medical equipment that, quite frankly, they were just there to bill the patient, not really to provide proper care. I mean, there's, yeah, this, is, this is always a part of the healthcare system that we need to manage and mitigate, right? That's it right. should not prevent us from moving ahead with, with the innovation this technology provides Agreed. us. Uh, Mr. Secretary, uh, just one last quick. I'm really deeply disappointed that the administration's budget, once again, did not include the Hyde Amendment which prohibits the use of federal funds to pay for abortions. You know, the Hyde Amendment has saved two point, an estimated 2.4 million lives since 1976. How can you tell 2.4 million Americans that our country would be better off if they were not born or allowed to live their lives? And so I'm, uh, I'm hoping and I'm praying for the Biden administration to be able to see just how wrong it is to, to not support what has been a long-standing bipartisan part of the federal government in the form of the Hyde Amendment. Congressman, uh, if I, I can respond, uh, this, this is one of those areas where we always have a lot of discussion. There are deeply held beliefs in this space, 
And I respect all of that. Uh, my job now as a secretary versus as a member of Congress is to now make sure that I'm exercising my, my duties to execute the law. And so we're gonna try to do it as best we can, staying within the confines of the law and making sure we protect those rights that people have under the law. And so I look forward to working with you. Uh, I believe it's very important that women have all their reproductive rights protected, but we can have that conversation and hopefully get to a good spot. Well, let's remember about uh, the rights of those 2.4 million that would have uh, not have life if it wouldn't have been for the Hyde administration. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I yield back. Thank you. The gentleman from California, Mr. Takano. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. A good, uh, good morning, Mr.